Hi, my name is Raymond Chan. I'm a product manager here at Ritsu. And today I'm going to talk to you about entering your own calibration kit in our handheld VNAs. Sometimes you will not always have the correct uh, calibration kit as I have here, one of our OSL kits. Sometimes you uh, want to use a different calibration kit that you have on hand. Uh, with our handheld VNA instruments, you have the capability of entering this into the instrument and using it to calibrate. The calibration kit is super important in terms of a VNA. Without a correct calibration, you will get some poor measurements and invalid measurements for the most part. Uh, today, I'm gonna show you first, I'm gonna talk to you about some of the different types of calibration kits out there. I'm gonna then define all the different terms and how you can enter it into the instrument. First, I'm gonna talk to you about OSLs. Here, I have a calibration kit, which is known as an OSL. O stands for open, short, and load. Uh, as you see here, these are n-type connectors and later on you will see the connector type and the frequency that you need makes a big difference especially when you enter a uh, correction factors into it into the instrument right here i have a tsol tosl it's pretty much the same thing the only difference is there's an open short load but there's also a through here to give you more accuracy as well here i also have another tosl calibration kit as you can see here these are uh, k-type connectors which will make a difference later on, especially when we get to the higher frequencies. As here, you see this one goes up to 43 and a half. Sometimes you will not have these calibration kits here and the instrument does not have them on the list. Some of you might be tempted to buy some calibration kits online. These are some N-type calibration kit. Here I have an N-type connector with a short and I have a load and I have an open here. These are relatively cheap online and in some situations they will work. But how do you enter something like this into our handheld instruments? And what happens when you don't enter it correctly? So here I'm gonna demonstrate what happens when you enter this calibration kit incorrectly into the handheld instruments and you will see some of the results of what happens. I've calibrated the handheld VNA and I've placed a 20 dB offset and I have measured it, which is the blue trace you see right here. And it's pretty close, it's pretty close to 20 dB, and that's what we expect when they cal when a handheld VNA has been calibrated correctly. The next thing I did was I took the off-the-shelf cheap calibration kit, and I used it to calibrate the instrument. I did not change the calibration kit, so according to the instrument, they thought it was still using our standard OSL calibration kit. And as you can see here, which is the yellow trace, the performance drops dramatically. So this calibration kit was rated for three gigahertz. So we did not go beyond its capability. What was different was the handheld VNA did not know that I was using a different calibration kit than what it had, what it was expecting. As a result, the measurement came out extremely poorly. Don't forget, this is a 20 dB offset we're measuring. So it should be around this area here. But instead, as you see here with the yellow trace, the performance drops dramatically. And that's because the handheld VNA was calibrating with a specific calibration kit and we gave it a different calibration kit. And next I'm going to go over all the different factors that, that cause this difference in measurements and how to enter your own user-defined calibration kit. As you just saw, having the correct calibration kit entering your instrument is vital for accurate measurements. Now I'm going to use the SA20E SiteMaster. I'm going to demonstrate how you can enter our user-defined calibration kit into the, into the unit and how to use it. And from there, I'm going to explain to you all the correction factors that I involve and explain to you what they are and why they're important and what frequency they matter the most. Okay, for this demonstration, I'm going to use the SA20E with the VNA option to demonstrate how to enter a user-defined calibration kit. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to the calibration menu. And from the calibration menu, you can do a bunch of things, including see what your current calibration information is. But for now, we're going to start the calibration instead. All right. From here, you can see what calibration kit it's thinking is ready and calibration kit. But this is not what we want. We want to enter our own user-defined calibration kit. So we're not going to use, hit the measurement button. Instead, we're going to hit the calibration setup button. As you can see now, the, you can see the current setup, which is a full two, full two port calibration, which is fine for this purpose. Coax, which is also good. 
SOLT, which is also good, standing for short open load through. Okay, we do not want to use a K female connector. We want to enter our own defined user calibration kit. So I'm going to click on that. You can also do it for each individual port. And then I'm going to edit selection here. As you can see, there are several types of uh, connectors over here, but we're going to go scroll down. I'm going to keep scrolling until we get to here, user one coax. As you see here, for SA20E, there are four user defined slots for coax. In other words, you can define up to four different calibration kit into this unit at any given time. So I'm going to click on user one, user one coax. I'm going to select it for this case. Next, I'm going to define the calibration kit. So I click on port calibration kit. I'm going to then select edit selection. As you can see here, this is the current information set up in the user one uh, slot. So follow the instruction, click here to edit it. Now we can edit all the parameters of this calibration kit. And next, I'm going to go over each of these calibration, uh, each of these values and why are they important and where do you find them on your calibration kit. But for now, I'm going to exit setup and it'll be ready to go. Now I'll select it. And you'll be ready to start your calibration kit. That's how you would enter a user defined calibration kit. Now I'm going to talk about each of these settings here and why they're important and how do they affect your calibration. The first measurement I want to talk about is the offset, as you see here. So there's actually three offsets for a through open short load, essentially. There's the open offset distance, the short offset distance, and then there's a through offset distance. The offset distance, or known as length, is probably the most important factor when it comes to entering your user-defined calibration kit. After that, there is going to be the uh, correction factor for the open, which is the capacitance, which are defined here, as you see here, and the correction factor for the short, which is the inductance, which you can see over here. The first thing is the length. So what is the length, as you can see here? So I have right here a TO cell kit that goes up to 18 gigahertz, and below here is the specifications sheet. And for the offset, like I said before, it's also known as the length. You can see it's defined here, 17.83, 17.83, and then a 58.5. So what is this length, what they're describing here? So as you see here, let's, gonna, let's start with the open. So the open, there's a length of 17.83. This distance is essentially accounting from this re reference plane all the way to where the open is actually located in here. So essentially, it's a distance of this pin. And it's the same thing for the short, because at the end of this pin here is going to be where the short is located. So this is essentially what this is telling you. So you need this. This is important because it tell, the VNA will actually uh, get basically cancel out this distance before it starts knowing, okay, this is the open, this is the short. Otherwise, the VNA will take the distance here as part of the short or the open in this case, and it will call, it will messes up your calibration. So in that case, what is the length for the through? Well, the definition is essentially the same. Uh, here's a diagram of the end connector. At the end of the pin, which will be probably around here, and another end connector, here's another pin, the distance between the end of here and here is 58.5 millimeters, which is defined by our specification sheet. And this is important, again, if you do not enter this correctly, the VNA will take account the distance from probably the reference plane all the way to the reference plane of the other end connector, and that is incorrect for the calibration kit. So the length is probably the most important correction factor when it comes to entering your user-defined calibration kits. Next, I'm going to talk about the some of these correction factor for the open and for the short. For lower frequencies, roughly around 10 gigahertz, and for larger connectors, such as 7 millimeters, these inductance factor for the open and the capacitance factor 
are not as important essentially. In some cases, you can set them to zero and you will probably maybe suffer a penalty of one tenth of a dB accuracy. Of course, this depends on your application. If you need all the accuracies, you definitely should enter all these correction factors. However, as you get to higher frequencies, you know, above 10 gigahertz and the connector gets smaller, as such as 3.5 millimeter, it becomes a much more important factor because they use, we generally use a third order polynomial to model this. And our correction and our te technical data sheet has these factors. You see here, for our capacitance, there's C0, 1, 2, and 3, which corresponds to these here in the equation, which, you know, for this, and that's how the VNA will compensate for it. Same thing for the short. There's L0, L1, L2, L3. And they go to this equation here, and the VNA will essentially compensate for it for the short, for the loss. And this is important, like I said before, especially at higher frequencies, such as this calibration K here, which goes up to 40 gigahertz, and it uh, uses a K connector, which is a very small connector. And this is why these factors here are super important when you are entering them into your handheld VNA. And like I said, to reiterate, probably the most important thing is your length, you know, your length between, you know, from your reference plane all the way to where the open is and all to where the short is. The length from the through, you can't see on this picture, from here to the other end. And then the correction factor for the open, which are here, and, and for your short are right here. So if you have a calibration that you want to enter, make sure you have these um, important information and check with the manufacturer, see if they provide you this information. If you do not have this information as stated here, your accuracy can suffer greatly in matter of fact if you don't enter it if you don't have it like for example you don't have the length as you saw in a previous example it can completely invalidate your measurements so i hope you found this helpful thank you for watching now you're able to enter your own calibration kit into your handheld vna instruments hope you find this helpful and see you next time